In this video, we're going to have a look at factorizing in trigonometry. So this is a nice short video, and all it's going to do is just outline the basics behind how we can factorize trigonometric expressions, and maybe we could even later on extend that when we deal with trig equations as well. What you're going to see going forward is the trig is going to become very algebraic. So things like being able to find a lowest common denominator or being able to factorize expressions clearly is going to become very important. And so it's about time the new and your old enemy finally become best friends. And with that, I'm talking about factorization. It's really about time that you take all that experience that you have with factorization and put it together and use it as a tool in order to answer questions that involve trig. So the types of factorization that you should be quite familiar with are difference of two squares, the difference of two squares, and that was when we had two square terms separated by a minus. So if we had something along the lines of x squared minus nine, you know that x squared is a squared term, and 9 is a squared term, and so we would factorize it to be x minus 3 and x plus 3. Then there was examples that you dealt with grouping. Often that was when you had more than three terms. So you knew it definitely was a tri wasn't a trinomial or quadratic, and so you had to figure out how to group terms together and then factorize those individual terms. And then the last thing that you did in grade 10 as well was advanced trinomials. And you'll remember that that tied in very nicely with the first few chapters that we did on quadratics. And remember, when it comes to quadratics, the most important thing is that standard form. And that doesn't change when we start dealing with trig either. However, what would you do if you were given something like this. So we've got x squared plus xy minus 2y squared. If I had given you, say, something like this, x squared plus x minus 2, you would have solved it easily and you would have said, okay, well, that's just going to factorize into x plus 2, x minus 1, and there you were done. So what makes this so much more different? Well, it's the introduction of that y over there. And what I can tell you is that this over here and this over here are pretty much the same except for that y. So instead of having x minus 2 by itself, I would factorize this to become x plus 2y, x minus y. So wherever I see a number, I make sure that I go and add that second variable in. So if you're struggling to see what I've done here, please go and recap the work that you, done on fact, that you did on factorization, because it's extremely important that you know how to deal with questions where we've actually got more than one variable. Now we can have a look at a couple of normal examples of things you can encounter this year. So in this first example here, we've got 3 cos squared theta minus 11 cos theta minus 4. And what we have to do is factorize this term. So I'm going to do it very quickly because up until now, you should know your rules of factorization quite comfortably. I just want you to see that it can be done with a trig ratio as well. So in this question, we will be treating the cos as if it were x. So basically, you can imagine it in your own head that this question is 3x squared minus 11x minus 4. Because that cos and the x behave in the same way. 
when you always start to factorize, you write down your two brackets. So there's your two brackets. And you know that by looking at this last sign over here, you can decide what you're going to need in those two brackets. So the rules are as follows. If you have a negative, so if there's a negative, then you have opposite signs in the brackets. Whereas if you're given a positive, then it's the same sign, but you need to go and choose that sign. So the same sign, and you choose by looking at the B value. Now that B value that I'm talking about over here refers to the standard form of a quadratic equation. So that AX squared plus BX plus C, you go and look at what sign does the B value have. And if the B value has a plus, then they will both be pluses. If the B value has a minus, then they will both be negative. So in this case, we're lucky. We know that they have opposite signs because we have a negative over there. So because of that, I can go and write those signs in. So it's going to be one plus and one minus. And I'm going to go and I need to go and choose what those si what values to fill in with those signs now. And I choose those values by paying attention to my coefficient a, so the coefficient in front of the squared term, as well as the last term. So you know that the coefficients of 3, or the factors of 3, I should say, are 3 and 1. And for 4, we've got... 4 and 1, 1 and 4, 2 and 2. So those are the factors of 4. And what we need to choose is a combination of them that gives us negative 11. So the way we do that is by something called the cross method. So we write two lines like that, and then we multiply the opposite value. So in other words, we multiply the value with whatever its diagonal attaches to. So the first one would be 3 times 1, which is 3, and then 1 times 4, which is 4. And then what you've got to do is sort of play around with the signs and ask yourself, what signs do we need to give us negative 11? Well, we know we've got a plus and a minus, so we check. We'll go plus 3 minus 4 doesn't work, minus 3 plus 4 doesn't work. So we can disregard those first two factors. And now we do the same thing again with the second set of factors. So the 3 will be multiplied by the 4 and the 1 by the 1. And so when we do that, we're going to get 3 times 4 is 12, and 1 times 1 is 1. And we know we need to get negative 11 with two opposite signs. And you'll see that it is minus 12 and plus 1. So we know by that then that the 4 will take the negative and the 1 will take the positive. How you go and choose which numbers to put into the brackets though is by looking at this bit over here. You can ignore that now. And you simply choose you can put your brackets even around like that, and you choose pairs that are next to each other. So the 3 and the 1, and the 1 and the 4. And so you go and write that in. There's your 3, and there's your 1, oops, and there's the 1 over there, and then the 1 and the 4. And of course, we know that we don't have to write the 1s in, so we can take that out. And then we can fill in our values. So we're going to get 3 cos theta plus 1 and cos theta minus 4. And now we have factorized that trinomial. Let's look at one more example now. This second example is quite a bit more complicated because if you look at this middle term over here, we've got a sign and a cos. So just like in the first question, where we had x squared 
plus xy minus 2y squared, we had two variables in that middle term. So whenever you're dealing with questions like this, focus on that middle term. And if you have two different ratios, then you know that in your bracket, you're going to have a cos and a sine in either of those brackets. So we start off the same way as before, and you write your two brackets down. You go and look at the sine in front of the C term. So we know we've got that A, B, C. So there's a C there. And so it's negative. So we've got a positive in one bracket, a negative in the other bracket. Then we go and write down our factors in front. So 2 and 15. So we've got 2 and its factor of 1. And then we've got 15 and 1, 1 and 15, 3 and 5, 5 and 3. Now, if you look very carefully at what we've got so far, I'm sure you notice that these ones over here are probably not going to give us our answer. So we can disregard them immediately and focus on these ones over here. And again, we use our cross method. So you draw your line across, you multiply the diagonal, so it will be 2 times 5 and 1 times 3, and we're going to get one, 2 times 5 is 10, 1 times 3 is 3. We go and check with a plus or a minus, a minus and a plus, and in either case, it doesn't work. So we can disregard that first pair, try it again with the second pair, multiply the 2 and the 3, the 1 and the 5, 2 times 3 is 6, 1 times 5 is 5. We know that we've got to do it with a positive and negative because of our bracket. So we know that we need to get negative 1, and we can get that by going minus 6 plus 5, which works. So we know that these are our factors over here. Draw your bracket round like that, so that you know which ones you're grouping together. So we're going to group the 2 and the 5 the 1 and the 3, and so all we have to do is fill those numbers in, so the 2 and the 5, we know that that's the case because we have to put the positive or the negative in front of the 3, so there's the 3 there, we've got a 1 over there which we don't need to write, and then we simply go and plug in the cos and the sines, so it's going to be 2 cos theta plus 5 sine theta and then cos theta minus 3 sine theta and if you go and distribute that bracket out you will get 2 cos squared theta minus cos theta sine theta minus 15 sine squared theta so just a very short video on how to factorize with trigonometry if this is giving you a headache and it's still making you sad after all these years, please go and have a look at a grade 10 textbook just to revise it for yourself. Because in this video, I did move very quickly and I didn't outline all the little intricacies of factorization because the point was just to show you that it works exactly the same with sine and cos as it would with x and y.